Today we look at one of the world's most influential economists, Hernando de Soto. Hernando de Soto is a Peruvian economist. He's the author of two important books, The Other Path and The Mystery of Capital. He's the founder of the Institute for Liberty and Democracy, which is based in Peru, but which has had a worldwide influence. He was named by Time magazine as one of the most influential people in the world in 2004. So what are the big ideas? I see three. First, the vitality of the informal sector. When Hernando de Soto and his team began investigating the informal sector in Peru, they discovered an amazing amount of entrepreneurship. The poor were building their own homes. They were creating transportation networks, jitneys and taxicabs. They were building small retail firms, even small manufacturing firms. The problem was not that the poor weren't entrepreneurial. The problem was not that the poor weren't capitalistic. The problem was not that the poor weren't working hard. Indeed, to survive, the poor had to do all of these things. The problem was that there were barriers to entry preventing these small firms from becoming big firms. There were barriers keeping these firms in the informal sector, not allowing them to become part of the formal sector. So the second big idea was to quantify those barriers, quantify the barriers to starting a business, to paying taxes, to using the legal system, and then to reduce those barriers. The third idea was that the poor actually own quite a bit of property, the problem was it wasn't formally recognized. It wasn't publicly documented property. And property which was not publicly documented was dead capital. It couldn't be used to get a loan or equity or to build upon. So the third big idea was to title property. So let me say a little bit more about quantifying the barriers. So in the mid-1980s, DeSoto began to document how long it would take to set up a legal business, such as a small two sewing machine shop. And what he found was it would take more than 300 days working six hours a day to legally set up a small business. Moreover, to do this, the total cost would be more than 32 times the minimum wage. So it was almost impossible for someone who was poor to become a legal, formally recognized business. Hernando de Soto's work to measure the barriers to entry in Peru inspired the World Bank to do the same thing for the entire world. This is the doingbusiness.org website, and it's got a fantastic amount of resources. So we can take a topic like starting a business and see what it's like to start a business all over the world. Let's look at this in the number of days it starts to takes to start a new business, beginning from the worst countries in the world to the best. So here is Suriname. It takes 694 days in Suriname to legally start a small business and 115% of GDP per capita to do that. Here is uh, another poor country, Zimbabwe, almost as bad as Suriname, 90 days to start a new business, 150% of GDP per capita. Here is Haiti, 105 days, 314% of GDP per capita. These are the poorest countries in the world where it's difficult to start a new business. That's absolutely a tragedy. Let's look down here at the bottom, the best countries in the world. In New Zealand, it takes just one day to start a new business and 0.4% of GDP per capita. Here's the United States, six days and 1.4%. So the United States could improve. The United States could do better. And that is indeed the virtue of these types of measuring processes. If we don't measure, we don't know what's going on. If we do measure, we can compare. And by comparing, we can try and improve. Let's take a look at a particular economy. Let's take a look at uh, Peru and how far Peru has come in improving their system. I'm going to pause for a second. So here is Peru. You remember in the 1980s, it took 300 days to start a new business. By 2004, it just took 98 days, a lot better. But by 2012, after the World Bank had begun measuring, it took just 26 days. Here's the cost in a percent of income per capita. Started out in 2004 at 40%. Today, it's at 12%. This is the influence of Hernando de Soto. Peru still has a ways to go, but by measuring, we can compare, we can improve, we can set up a competitive process. This has been very important, not just for Peru, but for the world as a whole. 
the main effect of titling has not been an increased access to capital, as many people had expected. Instead, the main effect has been increased labor supply. We discuss this further in other videos. This has led to something of a pushback against titling, the idea that maybe titling isn't everything it was cracked up to be. There's some truth to that, but one also has to remember that from the beginning, Hernando de Soto was clear that titling was just one part of the process to bring the poor into the market system. So here's a quote. The ILD is not just about titling. What we do is help governments build a system of public memory that legally identifies all their people, their assets, their business records, and their transactions in such a way that they can unleash their economic potential. No economy can develop and prosper without the benefits that clearly registered public documents bestow. So titling is just one part of a process. Not very briefly is Hernando de Soto. He began in Peru, but his ideas about reducing the barriers of the poor to enter the market process and about titling property have become important all over the world. Hernando de Soto hasn't written many technical papers in economics, but to me, he's a natural candidate for the Nobel Prize. Let me also end on this personal note. His book, The Other Path, was a direct challenge to Peru's terrorist guerrillas, The Shining Path. And because of that challenge, he was the subject of numerous assassination attempts. The Institute for Liberty and for Democracy was bombed, and Hernando de Soto's car was machine gunned. So to me, Hernando de Soto is a hero. And I've been inspired not just by his ideas, but also by how he has lived his life. Thank you.